In this video, I'm going to go over what you should do to prepare before releasing a game on Steam. I'll go over the various tasks that I do before the game is ready for launch in order to increase the chances of success. This is my general to-do list that I have crafted over my 8 Steam releases. Alright, let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here is my complete general to-do list. This is the list that I follow before release, and then there's another list of things to do right after release. I'll go over point by point what each element represents and why it's important. If you follow this list, your chances of finding success on Steam increase dramatically. First, here is the before release list. This assumes your game is pretty much fully complete. Usually for me, I do most of these things in the last two to three weeks before release. It is important to have the game pretty much done since you need to record footage for the trailer and grab some screenshots. So let's start there with preparing the store page. This one should actually be done before release, but then it should be updated right as you're about to launch. One of the most important elements to find success on Steam is to gather a large number of wishlists before you launch. So as soon as your game is ready enough to be announced, you should have a Steam page ready to collect those wishlists. And right before you launch, you should review the store page and improve it. Your text should be very quick and to the point. No one is going to read the wild text, so stick to short sentences and bullet points. Always write your text from the point of view of what benefit it provides the player. So for example, instead of saying features 10 weapons, you should say destroy your enemies with 10 different weapons. On Steam, you can also add GIFs to your store page, so make sure you do that. Animated GIFs are a great way to quickly grab someone's attention. And make sure you update the store page to indicate all the various Steam features that the game has along with its languages and your media links. Then one of the most important pieces of marketing is your trailer. This will likely be the main thing that sells or turns off players to your game. It will also be the main thing that press sites will embed in their articles. For a good trailer, the best approach is to keep it brief, so usually 60 to 90 seconds. Going shorter than that will likely not be enough time to showcase your features, and going longer you risk losing the interest of your viewers. Get right to the action and try to hook the viewer in the first 10 seconds. So that means definitely don't spend 30 seconds showcasing your studio logo. The content for the trailer will obviously depend on the genre. Music is extremely important for taking the trailer to another level. So if you have an action game, it should be very fast paced and clearly sell the feeling of playing the game. Whereas if you have a management tycoon game, then you should show just how complex and expansive the player can build. Either way, you need to quickly hook the player on what is unique about your game. Remember, there are hundreds of games coming out every month, so why should a player stick with your game instead of just going to the next one? After the trailer comes the screenshots. Usually stick to a small number of good screenshots, so some like 5 or 6. Make sure they showcase different parts of your game, and make sure you have the UI disabled when taking them. Steam also requires the screenshots to feature just gameplay, so avoid adding extra elements. Then you have Steam tags, which are an excellent way to increase discoverability. You should add popular but accurate tags to your game. Anyone can add tags, but as a developer you have extra power in the tags that you add, so choose them wisely. The tags help Steam classify your game, which will help choose where the game will appear on various places in the store. Here the More Games list showcases similar games, so your game might show up on other games with similar tags. Here on the Steam recommendations you can see it recommends a certain game because you played something similar. And each tag has its own page where you can see the new releases, what's hot, discounts and so on. Some of the tags are hyper competitive like the indie tag, so chances are you won't be able to really stand out on that one. So go for more niche tags that accurately describe your game. Here my game Battle Royale Tycoon is on the new and trending for the management tag. So again, tags are very important, very powerful, and you have extra power, so choose your 5 tags wisely. Something very important for launching on Steam are the Steam features. Some people will absolutely not touch a game if it does not have achievements, so make sure you implement as many Steam features as you can. The implementation is very simple, and you can use the free Steamworks.net wrapper in Unity. So add achievements to your game, then also add as many other features as you can. Stats and leaderboards are very easy to implement. 
Then you have Steam Cloud, which you should use to store save files and options. And finally, Trading Cards. This one depends if your game is allowed or not. I believe right now any game must reach a certain threshold before it can add cards, so you might not be able to do it right at launch. However, when you can, do add them since there are a lot of people who really care about cards and adding them will help ensure a nice long tail. If this is your very first Steam game, then try to allow for a nice amount of time to research and implement all of these features. Another Steam feature that might be extremely important depending on your game is the Workshop. There are some games that live and breathe based on the workshop and others that no one really touches it. Regardless of how suitable your game is, it always helps to add it. So think about what you have in your game that can be customized. For example, maybe you have some characters and you can customize the sprite, maybe you have some weapons where you can modify their stats, or maybe you can go really hard and make some sort of Lua scripting mods to allow for really complex logic like custom quests. How deep you go in the workshop is up to you. Also, depending on how complex it is, you may need to add some instructions. Creating an official guide is a great way to do it. Then when you have decided what types of items you want to allow, it's time to add some of your own to the workshop. That way when the game comes out, there are already some items for people to play around with. And here's a bonus tip. In my games, I like to highlight certain items and showcase them in game. Here it is in the corner. This is the workshop showcase. The way it works is it grabs the items added to this collection and displays them in-game. This is a great way of showing in-game what other people have created. Something you can do on Steam is create a dedicated developer page. This is a place where you can list all your games and sort them in collections. You can also post announcements and people can follow you as a developer. If this is your first game, then you don't have much to put there, but make sure the page is set up. If players like your game, they might follow you in the developer page, which will allow you to post announcements whenever you launch your next game. If you get enough fans, that is a really good way of making subsequent releases much easier. One of the best ways of reaching a larger audience is simply localization. Whether this is easy or hard will depend on how you built your game. If you have a lot of hard-coded strings and text and images, this will be very hard or impossible. However, if you built your game while thinking about later adding localization, then this task will be very simple. As you are making the game, make sure everywhere you use a string, you grab it from a class. If you do it like that, then all you need to do is get the translations and add localization logic to that class. Here is how I set up the localization for my games. Anywhere I need some text, I just call this function with an enum to identify the string. And then here it simply does a switch and grabs a string based on the active language. So as you're building your game, keep localization in mind. You can double or triple your sales by simply supporting more languages than just English. Then you have Unity Analytics and Cloud Diagnostics. This one will be extremely useful when the game is finally out. Analytics will depend on what kind of game you're making, whether it's incredibly useful or simply nice to have. If your game is free to play, then using analytics to ensure people don't drop out is a necessity. However, for paid games, they are also useful, but less so since your goal is to ensure the player has fun rather than increase the retention. What is extremely important is Cloud Diagnostics. If you've never used it, this is a wonderful Unity feature. It allows you to track crashes and errors through the Unity dashboard. No matter how much you test your game before launch, you can guarantee that other people won't find bugs. And those people won't always be able to send you logs and save files. So Cloud Diagnostics is a godsend since you can see what issues are happening with other people playing your game. This will help you understand what the issue might be and how to fix it without having to depend on someone sending you their log files. So by now your game should be completely stable when you play on your own machine. You should find no bugs, no issues or anything wrong. However, do remember that the second the game goes live on Steam, you will have, hopefully, thousands of people playing your game. That also means thousands of different configurations and you need to make sure your game works on all of them. So use application.targetFrameRate to limit the frame rate of your game and make sure it is still fully playable at 10 frames per second. The logic in your game should not be dependent on frame rate, since you want even people with very low NPCs to be able to play. Also make sure you fully test your game in all kinds of resolutions. Unity allows you to change the aspect ratio, so make sure your game plays normally in 16x9 as well as 5x4. This means all your UI should be set up correctly and anchored to the corners. If you just anchor everything to the center, then you'll have a lot of issues with smaller, more square resolutions. 
Then add some safety error messages that should be visible in case something goes wrong, particularly when loading. Here in my game you can see this window with this text. This is shown right at the beginning of the first frame and hidden right at the end of that first frame. Meaning that if everything goes well, this is hidden and the player never sees it, but if something goes wrong during loading and the hide code doesn't run, the message is shown. This helps the player know something went wrong and how to contact me to fix it. Without this message, the player would simply be lost. Also, if you added localization, make sure all of the languages work. Personally, the way I test this is to make a script that changes the language every second and simply play the game like that. You should see all the text objects correctly change language. And if you're supporting languages with special characters, like Chinese or Korean, then this is the time to test if your font correctly displays everything. Then some more miscellaneous things. One thing I always include in my games is a changelog. This is just a simple text file that I store in the game folder. It contains each version, the date, and what changed. I also post the same information on a pin thread on the forums. Also, something specific to my games is the two widgets that I'll always add to the main menu. Down here is the carousel, just showing all of my other games. This list is grabbed from my website, so before I launch a new game, I add it to that list. That way, all my other games also show the updated list. And up here is the mailing list widget. Growing a newsletter is very important in order to find success as a game developer. And again, I just pretty much have a sign up page and sign up through here. Both of these were made ages ago and they still work flawlessly. And lastly, before you release the game, make sure you add a launch discount. It is possible to launch without a discount, but if you're not a AAA game, then it's very difficult to succeed in doing so. So make sure you add a discount between 10 and 20%. All right, so that's the before release to-do list. You should have a store page that is well written with some nice animated GIFs to capture the eye. Your trailer should be quick and leave the player wanting more. The screenshots should be just a handful and clearly communicate what the game looks like. Your Steam page should have tags that are accurate and popular. Your game should have as many Steam features as you can. If you add the Steam Workshop, you should pre-add some items as well as some instructions. Your build should have Unity Cloud Diagnostics and Analytics so you can debug your game when it's out. Your build should also have been fully tested in all kinds of edge case scenarios like low frame rate, different languages, and different resolutions. And lastly, any other things specific to your game or you as a developer. So at this point, you're ready to hit the release button. That's a great moment, so go ahead and just hit release. And yay, congratulations, you have just published a Steam game. Awesome. However, as a solo developer, you have to keep your celebration very brief. The second the game is out, there's a ton of work left to do. So in the next video, I will cover what you should do as soon as your game is out in order to ensure you have a successful launch. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more game dev videos and Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.